that's what we're talking about when we say that something stifles innovation, is it takes resources that could be developing a platform and developing safety tools, and it just, you know, sends them to lawyers. Welcome to Elise and Ashley Break the Internet, a series where we're exploring the ins and outs of Section 230, the law that has defined content moderation for platforms big and small for over 20 years. I'm Elise Dick, Research Fellow at the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation. We're a tech policy think tank based in Washington, D.C. And I'm Ashley Johnson. I'm a research analyst covering internet policy at ITIF. In this episode, we'll be looking beyond the big tech companies that are often the focus of the debate surrounding Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, and instead discussing the law's impact on small to mid-sized platforms. Joining us, we have Jessica Ashu, Director of Policy at Reddit. Welcome to the podcast, Jessica. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So, Jessica, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on is because Reddit is really unique in terms of your community and your content moderation being a unique online platform. It's a community of communities. So can you talk a little bit about your content moderation approach? Yeah, absolutely. So Reddit, as you uh, said, follows a community moderation model. So this is very different from the more centralized, corporatized uh, moderation models that a larger company may follow. Um, So just for a brief overview of how Reddit handles um, content moderation, Reddit is divided into hundreds of thousands of different communities known as subreddits. And these are um, essentially um, message boards of interest that are organized around a particular topic. Now, these are all created and moderated by the users themselves on a volunteer basis. So a community moderator is not a Reddit employee. He or she is just a person who's really passionate about whatever they've come to Reddit to find community and belonging about. And we want to empower those people to be able to set the tone to have the types of conversations that they want to have. And so community moderators are empowered to set rules that are specific to their particular subreddit. And these can be very, very um, detailed. They can be very quirky. We have communities that only allow um, photos of certain animals. We have communities that will only allow discussion of certain sports teams. Um, We have a wide range of communities and we really wanna um, give the users the power to set the tone for that conversation. We give them a variety of tools to do so. And you can think of those community rules or those subreddit rules almost like um, state or municipal laws if you were to think of Reddit as a federal system. Now, sitting on top of those subreddit rules is the Reddit content policy, which we set as a company in which you can think of like a constitution for Reddit. And like a constitution, it's high level and principles based. So it includes everything that you would expect it to include. Don't encourage violence, um, don't harass people, don't dox people, things of that nature. And um, we'll step in and enforce that content policy in situations where either um, the community moderators are unwilling or unable to um, enforce rules adequately in their community, or if it's an issue like, for example, commercial spam, where it really takes a little bit more uh, work on the back end, and it's something that may be happening across communities that um, needs administrative attention from us. Now, one of the biggest benefits of this system is that it inherently scales with our users. Um, The only thing that really scales with users is other users. And that's really important to us at Reddit, because frankly, we're a much smaller company in terms of employee numbers than people realize. So we're around 750 employees um, and 430 million monthly active users worldwide. So um, we really have no choice other than to involve of the users in these content moderation decisions um, because that's the only way that it scales. And frankly, it's a more democratic approach. Um, and we think that it's healthier for discourse and healthier for the platform um, to involve users directly in these content moderation decisions. And in fact, as is borne out in our public transparency report, more than 99.7% of all content removals on Reddit actually happen at the volunteer moderator level. So it truly is a community-driven platform. So 
using that model, can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges you have with that approach that might not exist in more traditional uh, moderation approaches? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest challenges is that um, it puts a lot of weight on people who are volunteers. And so we spend a lot of time thinking as a company about how we can be sure that we're engaging with um, our user community, making sure that they understand what our rules are, what the expectations are for using the platform. And also, we have to make sure that we're providing them with the appropriate tools um, to be able to um, moderate their communities as they see fit. So for example, one of the tools that we provide our user base and our moderators is called Auto Moderator. And it's a very simple automated tool that allows um, community moderators to do things like block certain words from appearing in their community, block certain racial slurs, block links from particular domains. And that's a very basic thing um, that's important to just maintaining a baseline of health in a conversation. Um, but one of the things about auto, moder uh, auto moderator as it stands right now is that it does take a little bit of programming knowledge to be able to, to use it adequately. And so one of the things that we're working on um, right now as we speak is creating a version of auto moderator that's much more user friendly, um, that you don't need programming knowledge to be able to implement um, in your community. And that's one of the things that we're doing to try and make you know Reddit a more inclusive and welcoming place for people um, of all different knowledge levels and backgrounds. So we are a Section 230 podcast, so I will ask you the Section 230 question. Uh, do you think this approach would look different if intermediary liability protections that are in place today were different or not in place at all? Our approach would absolutely look different because it would have to, because we'd be fully responsible for everything on the site. And the impact of that is that we would no longer be able to have this type of relationship with our users where we put um, so much trust in the users and devolve decision making into the user base. Because um, as a business decision, it simply couldn't bear it out. Because when you talk about um, liability, um, really from a business point of view, it's all about costs. So for example, even with Section 230 in place, we can still be sued. It's most likely that uh, those lawsuits will be dismissed, but even to bring a lawsuit to dismissal, it can cost upwards of $80,000. And you can see how those um, costs will pile up very, very quickly. Um, and so that's really a death sentence for smaller companies that are just getting off the ground, or even medium-sized companies like ours that are still privately held, still on venture funding, and don't have millions of dollars to throw around um, defending against frivolous lawsuits. As you've sort of alluded to, much of the debate surrounding Section 230 focuses on the big tech platforms like Google, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. But Section 230 protections apply to platforms of all sizes. What impact does Section 230 have on the broader ecosystem of small and medium-sized digital communications and social networking platforms? Yeah, well, it really puts them on more even footing with the larger companies that we have to compete with. And that's really important because I think that there is a hidden competition angle as well in the Section 230 debate. Um, because, you know, there are companies whose legal departments are larger than <laughs> our entire employee base. And so it would be very, very difficult um, for us to, to compete in that manner. And you can see how, you know, there is actually an incentive if you're a larger company for some regulatory capture, because you know that your smaller competitors and companies, frankly, that haven't emerged yet would never be able to um, comply with burdensome regulations. So I think that that's a really, really important thing to keep in mind. And another thing to keep in mind, frankly, is um, how democratizing Section 230 is in terms of how people use the internet. So it's important to point out that, you know, Section 230 on a Reddit model um, 
protects not only us as the company, but it protects those volunteer user moderators as well, who are themselves making content moderation decisions. And, you know, that's a point that we brought up in our FCC comment um, on Section 230 rulemaking last fall, because it's a really salient one, and it's not purely academic. We have had some of our moderators be sued by other users who take exception to the rules of the communities that the moderators have set up. Um, and so this is really, really important to protecting a community model of the internet that in many ways is what the internet was originally about and is the healthier aspect of that early internet that had so much promise. I think it's really fascinating that Reddit is sort of this reminiscent platform of the early internet where it's so community-based and that you've managed to really like you said, scale that approach. You ha now have, you said, hundreds of millions of monthly active users. December report said you had around 50 million daily active users. So this puts you in a really interesting mid-sized but growing position. Um, can you talk a little bit about the role that the intermediary liability protections have played, not only in enabling your content moderation, but also this growth that you've been seeing? I mean, to put it really frankly, we would not have been able to grow in the way that we have without um, the protections that Section 230 offers. And you can see that in the examples of cases where Section 230 protections have been taken away, because there are um, a few carve outs that have happened to Section 230. SESTA FOSTA, of course, um, is the one that most people are familiar with. And basically, what happens? when you have um, a carve out in liability exceptions is that content around whatever topic the carve out is specific to, that content goes away. And so um, in the case of SESTA and FOSTA, for example, that content was harm reduction content and harm reduction discussions and resources for um, sex workers. And so that all of that content went away. And you can see how something similar could be at risk for happening on any number of other really, really important topics that people have discussed having Section 230 carve-outs on. Um, one great example is there's been a discussion about a Section 230 carve-out for opiate-related content. Um, you know, there are addiction support and harm reduction communities on the internet that rely on those protections of Section 230 to be able to have those honest conversations about themselves. And it would be um, really damaging uh, to people who are struggling with those issues to take away, you know, this incredible discussion space for them to, to process their, their problems. Um, another thing that I think we would probably see um, at a high level, um, not so much on Reddit, but kind of at a high level um, on other platforms is that you would see the internet become much more corporatized and commercialized because user generated content would suddenly be um, very dangerous from a liability point of view. And so, you know, a larger platform wouldn't necessarily go away or cease to exist but I think that you would see more kind of approved content, if you will, where it's more content from kind of official creators or from brands. And, you know, there's a time and a place for that content, but that's not really why most people come to the internet. Most people come to the internet because they want to see the full um, um, breadth of interesting ideas that other users have. Um, and I think that that would go away and it would be a real shame. So we've definitely touched on this, but just to ask explicitly, what are the dangers to companies like Reddit if Congress repealed Section 230 or weakened its liability protections? And what impact would that have on consumers? Yeah, it's really for from a company standpoint, for us, the fear is the death by a thousand cuts, you know, having to fend off dozens, if not hundreds, maybe thousands, who knows, of frivolous lawsuits. Um, and that would be um, not only difficult from a resource standpoint, but it would be bad for the health of the platform and bad for the health of the internet. Because in addition to, you know, the raw costs that we talk about um, in terms of defending against lawsuits, 
yes, there is kind of the raw cost and the sunk cost of the money itself, but you also have to think about it in terms of opportunity cost. And what that means is that, you know, that's $80,000 that's not being spent on product development. It's not being reinvested into the platform. It's not being invested into things like safety tools that would, you know, work to overall make the internet um, a better place. And so it, it really does hamper innovation. I know that that phrase gets um, thrown around a lot and has almost become cliche, but that's what we're talking about when we say that something stifles innovation, is it takes resources that could be developing a platform and developing safety tools, and it just, you know, sends them to lawyers. So when you're talking about innovation, obviously there's innovation within companies what do you think it looks like for smaller startup platforms? Is it even possible with weakened protections, especially if they want to take creative approaches to content moderation like Reddit has? Yeah, one of the really interesting things about Section 230 and the debate on Section 230 is that many of the people who argue that Section 230 needs to be thrown out or radically reformed will say that um, the internet is a very different looking place now than it was in 1996 when, when Section 230 came about. Um, but I think that that's actually the brilliance of Section 230 is that it's something that truly enabled the flourishing of the internet economy as we know it today. And it enabled platforms and business models that we couldn't even have conceived of um, in the 90s. And that's, you know, that's not a bug. That's by design. Um, and so there are business models and new technologies that we haven't even conceived of yet that, you know, hypothetically enjoy the protection of Section 230, and they're on the cusp of, of being developed, but they won't be if you take away uh, those protections. So while we're talking about company size, let's have a hypothetical. One of the things that's been discussed is amending Section 230 so that only companies of a certain size would have the protections available to them. How would this impact Reddit's approach to content moderation if, for example, you still receive protections, but larger companies did not? Well, it's a really difficult question because how you measure size on internet platforms is actually not especially straightforward. You can look at it from a user-based perspective, um, just raw people hitting the platform. And in that sense, you know, Reddit looks very large, 430 million monthly users. Um, but as I've already mentioned, we're only 750 employees. So um, do we have the resources to be able to comply with a large regulatory regime? You know, certainly not to the degree that a larger company would. And then even if you kind of um, break uh, that data down further, um, users look very different. Some users spend a lot of time on the platform. Some users don't spend a lot of time on the platform. Some register, some users are registered, some aren't. And that all has kind of very different implications for how you moderate content um, and how you approach regulating how platforms moderate content. Um, and so it's not, it's not always a simple apples to apples comparison. Um, revenue is another thing um, that many people will look at when deciding who's a large company and who's not a large company. Um, you know, you can be uh, drawing a healthy revenue stream, but still not making billions and billions of dollars. And I think that this conversation gets um, very distorted by the fact that we are literally talking about the largest, most capitalized um, companies in the world, you know, perhaps in human history ever. Um, when we're talking about this debate, it, it, it almost doesn't make sense to try and hold up a, a Reddit against, you know, in Amazon and say that, um, you know, you're both large because, you know, the reality is the companies look very, very different. And frankly, the product models of all of these um, platforms are very, very different. And again, I think that that's really the genius of Section 230 is that it accommodates co companies large and small. It accompanies, it, it accommodates um business models that um, range from everything to online sales platforms to your community message board. And, you know, that diversity of product is really, really important to keep in the marketplace. So do you think size and scale have any place in this debate? Or are there other differentiating factors that should be considered? Or should it just be blanket protections 
across the board to keep that flexibility that you've discussed? I think there's a conversation to be had about size and scale, but it's important that that conversation be very nuanced and have eyes wide open about all of the kind of different points that I just raised about how you can measure size and you know why you might re- measure size. Are you measuring size because you want to see how many people are exposed to something on a particular platform? Are you measuring size because you want to evaluate um, the resources that a company has to deal with any particular um, legislation? And those are two questions where you know the answer um, would imply a very different action. So for our final question that we ask all of our guests, we want to know what your verdict is on Section 230. Should we keep it, amend it, or repeal it? I am in favor of keeping it. I think it's working. Thanks so much for joining us, Jessica. That's it for this episode. If you liked it, then please be sure to rate us and tell friends and colleagues to subscribe. You can find the show notes and sign up for a weekly email newsletter on our website, itif.org. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn too, at ITIFDC.